Welcome to Game Dev Adventures. I am Diego Lizarazo, and today I'm going to try to create a small video, like the second part of a video, um, that revolves around functions with uh, Construct2. Uh, just don't forget to uh, check my YouTube channel, like here you can um, check most of my videos, uh, and after I stream them on Twitch, uh, I usually tend to upload them here, so just give me your feedback and hopefully, uh, well, you're going to like what I'm going to do. So the previous video, I created a small example that was covering the uh, basically like the basics to use functions with, with Construct2. So here you can see that I created several functions that are called in different in different scenarios, and I was just trying to show how you could, uh, in certain cases, call the same piece of code, the same events, basically, uh, and you don't have to repeat everything. So in this case, it's quite interesting because then I am calling uh, basically uh, the create enemy when I'm touching the screen or every two seconds anyway I'm creating an enemy because I'm using the same actions to create them so today uh, I think I'm going to cover just one aspect of uh, functions I still I, it's, well functions are quite a quite powerful a quite powerful tool in Construct 2 so I don't know if I'm going to be able to cover everything in, in these videos and I want to keep them short so today I'm just going to co uh, to talk a little bit about the parameters and how you how to use them so first I'm just going to show you what we have so far and then uh, we're going to start modifying this example so right now uh, every two seconds the create enemy uh, function is being called and is creating a random enemy here but also whenever I touch the screen like here or here or here then uh, I create well new enemies and whenever I touch the little green square I destroy all the enemies so that's that's really good but what happens uh, well I'm going to run it again and you should see for example here that whenever I have several enemies and I touch one of them it stops all the enemies that we had on screen at that moment right you see that and then it's of course creating another enemy whatever I am touching because well we are calling two different two different functions that do different things so this one is creating a new enemy when I touch anywhere on the screen and this one is stopping the enemies that does that so, but what happens if I don't want to um, if I don't want to stop all the enemies? What if what happens if I just want to stop one enemy? So, for example, I create this enemy. Now I have two, and I just want to stop this one. I don't want to this, stop all the ones that are on the screen. That is what happens here. So, one option is to add parameters. So, parameters is basically a value that it could be a number or it could be a string that you send to your function. So, for example, at this moment in this event, number six, we are touching an enemy. So, Construct2 knows which enemy out of all the ones that are on screen I touch. But it's calling the stop enemy function and it's stopping all of them because they are in different contexts, they are in different events, they are not like link per se then here when we are saying stop the enemy we're not talking about a particular enemies it's stopping all the enemies and that's what happens when when well for example you destroy enemies here uh, you are also calling all of them so how do I say like I want to stop one in particular not all the enemies so one option this is not the only one but it is to illustrate how uh, functions work here would be to modify how I'm calling the stop enemy and you see here that you can add parameters and you could add as many parameters as you want okay so 20 50 whatever but I, I am just going to modify to add one in particular this one is something that in this event I already know that is enemy dot UID so the UID is basically the universal identifier number and I'm going to show here for a second that whenever you pick one sprite and not only sprites but in this particular case it is you see that it has a UID zero 
this one has another UID 3. So every element that is created on Construct 2 has a UID. And even if I create a copy of this, let's say I do this, this one has a different UID. This one is 0, this one is 4. So they are both enemies, but you can tell, tell them apart. You can say I want to work with this or I want to work with this. At this moment I'm just going to delete this. And uh, what I'm saying here is I am calling the function call stop enemy and on top of that I'm sending a parameter in this particular case is enemy UID now how do I use that enemy UID in this function well the easier way that I have is I'm going to create a sub event so you see I, I just press the letter B I could have done something like this like uh, add blank sub event so you see that is the letter B. This is the one, the one that I did. So I'm going to keep just one. And I am pick. I'm going to pick one enemy. Um, well, and also I'm going to move this here. So, well, let's do that later. Uh, I am going to pick one enemy. So I'm going to say enemy, pick, and we have several options. And you see here that there's one that it says pick by unique ID that's the UID so that's the one that I want and this is where uh, it gets tricky it's not really that complicated but, but it's not perhaps obvious at first is that we have a parameter so I'm going to say done for a second for a second this is not going to work it's just to show you we sent a number to the function so when we're doing this we're sending a, a number in this case for example it could be zero there is this number here. So zero goes here. Then I'm picking a UID that in this case I'm calling zero. It's not correct. It should be the parameter that I have here. So that's what I'm going to write. I'm going to say function dot param and then zero. Now let me explain this. What this is saying is function is just like well the reserve word the param is to uh, to have access to the parameter and then in, inside parentheses you specify which parameter you're sending so in this case it's zero because I'm the counting here starts at zero so if I have well, let me just show you if I had something like this you see that it always starts at parameter zero, 0 so this is the one that I want if I wanted this one that I'm just going to send a random number if I wanted this number I would say parameter 1 or this one and that it could be a string so I could say hello so uh, I am sending three parameters parameter 0, 1 and 2 so the one that I want is this one the enemy UID that's why I'm saying here parameter 0 if I wanted to access the hello, I would say parameter 2. And now, what do I do? I am just going to move this action from here to here. So instead of like just saying stop all the enemies, I am picking a particular uh, enemy and then I am stopping it. Now let's see if this works. I'm going to create several enemies and then I'm just going to pick this yellow one. And that's the only one to stop all the others are con are moving so let's move another one here and I want to stop this red one and it stops of course uh, I am just going to disable for a second um, well, uh, uh, yeah let's let's just keep doing it like that it il illustrates anyway what what we want and is that we're picking a particular enemy not all of them if I didn't do it like that if I just move this one here so it doesn't really matter I'm not putting an, an action here so look at the difference I stop all of the ones that have been created at, up to that point so it's quite different the result now let's suppose uh, that I want to do something similar with uh, with the destroy enemy. Right now what we're doing here is that when I whenever I touch the green square that we have here, I am calling the function destroy enemy. But 
um, I am uh, destroying all of them, right? So let's suppose that I just want to destroy the last one that has been created. So I am just going to add a global variable. I'm going to call it last one. Well, okay, I could do it. Yeah, I'm going to do it like that. It doesn't matter. I guess that if it's a global variable, I could use it there. But to explain this, it works. And whenever I'm going, whenever I'm creating a new enemy that is here, I am just going to update this variable. So I'm going to say set value last one to enemy dot UID, right? So in last one, I have the UID of the last enemy that has been created. Now, just to do something similar, uh, I am going to say, hey, whenever I touch the destroyer, this green square here, I'm going to call the destroy enemy, and I'm going to add a parameter. And this parameter is just going to be the variable last one. Of course, I understand that this is a global variable I could like try to use it here but this is just to kind of like put an example right so what I'm going to do here is create a sub event it's going to be similar to this one actually I'm going to even copy it and uh, well I copied the entire event so the entire uh, uh, event so and I am just going to move this here so now instead of just destroying all the enemies that I do this is what was going to happen with the action here. I'm going to pick a specific enemy and I'm going to destroy it. So it's going to be the last one. So I'm going to create several. This is the last one that, well, actually it's one of this. So the red one over here, another one. And you see that it, it is being destroyed. Now the blue, of course, blue, blue. So depending on when I'm creating one, I am destroying a different one, but it's always the last one. It's not just all of them. So it works. Um, now, uh, like I said before, you can keep adding parameters here. Usually if you're passing more than 10, perhaps you're doing a little something a little bit crazy, but hey, it's going to be your game, not mine. And if you don't want to have this, then what you can do is just remove parameters and then I start doing like that. The cool thing is that here is telling you exactly the number in case that you don't remember this thing that uh, the parameters start being counted at zero. So you can just open here, and well you say done, and if you don't know which parameter you want to uh, use, you just double click on the call and you can tell that you want this one in particular. For example, I want parameter four. So then I would use here param four. So that's pretty much it. Uh, in the previous example, I'm going to save this one. Uh, save as a single file. Functions example number two. So we can have what we have done so far. And quite likely, what I'm going to cover in the next video around functions is going to be how to set the returning value of a function. Uh, and I think that's going to cover most of what you can do with functions after that. Really, it depends on what you want to do inside the function. So since it's just another event, like you see that here I'm putting events and sub-events and actions however you want, then a function could do almost anything that you want. It, it, the advantage is that you're going to be able to call it at any point during your um, well event sheet and that if it's something that is going to be repeated constantly like creating enemies or destroying enemies or updating the high score or different things then you just have to call it once and then you don't have to repeat the same code so it's going to be cleaner it's going to be easier to uh, update and to maintain that 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 code or well these events in case that you don't think that that's code well uh, I think that's pretty much it for the moment uh, please let me know um, by my Twitter or, my, or in my blog or in my YouTube channel that you're going to see here. What do you think of these videos and if you have any other questions, comments, suggestions or if you just want to say hi, just well, be welcome and go ahead and do it. Thank you.